Hi guys, welcome to Big Mech's Workshop, Paint Studio, I'm Dodge, and just because of requests we keep getting in, it's another Fire Raptor. We are painting this for someone in Sweden. Um, we started, as always, with our Vallejo Black Primer. Now, we've got a video on how to assemble the Fire Raptor, in case you're having trouble with yours. After watching that, uh, go on to this. If you haven't got an airbrush, I will try and tell you the colours you need to use without using it. So we started with Vallejo Black Primer, then we're using German Red Brown Primer through the airbrush. If you haven't got that, you could just straight prime it with the um, German Red Brown. That would be fine as well. Now we're going to go over the majority of the model in a Scarlet Red by Game Air. Uh, you could do this with a brush also, you just really need to thin it down like a wash. And do each palette, uh, each uh, plate on the armour separately. <laughs> Just bringing those colours towards the um, edge of the model, making them darker in the recesses. I've seen people do this in reverse, I guess it's a matter of preference. Then we're using Mephiston Red to uh, bring up those edges even further. Just around the edges, about half a centimetre in towards the edge. Um, it didn't show up very well on camera because of the very subtle transitions that the brush gives you. Uh, what the airbrush gives you. You can see it a bit better there now I've got it closer to the camera. Now once you've done all that you've got a very very red model so I decided to start breaking up a few bits. This is Vallejo Black Primer uh, and a regular standard, I think that's a medium brush actually by Games Workshop. This is watered down because it's a very flat surface and we don't want any brush strokes in it. Now the engines are kept separately, um, just for the ease of painting. Um, this is liquid copper again. Remember, guys, when using the liquid metals from Vallejo, you need to use surgical spirit on your brush and to thin the paints down because water will just oxidise it and it won't work properly. You get a lovely smooth coat with these paints. I have obviously done the. Metallic, the other metallic parts in Vallejo liquid silver you have to let it dry for at least an hour or two make sure it's fully dry otherwise the pigment will move around when you put the wash on so we're going to put a null oil wash in now if you don't have these colours you can always use um, Balthazar gold or one of the brasses and good old lead belcher which is uh, what I'm going to do now to start breaking up those colours I don't want too many of the same silvers so I'm going to use lead belcher on all, most of the other metallic parts. I think it's pretty much all of them. Now, I had to paint this one so it matched someone else's army, so uh, didn't really have too much choice on what colours I used here. Now obviously we need to brighten down the um, copper that we've put on. Um, so I used Agrax Earthshade for that. You may need to do more than one coat on this because it's so smooth that um, the wash doesn't always stick. It sort of separates on the um, on the model. But you could always mix it up with some medium and uh, just do several coats. But I'm going to do engine burn, so I'm not too concerned about that at the moment. Now the logos, they were uh, the Aquilas. Sorry, they were done in uh, Balthazar gold. Why everything else is drying, we'll come back to those in a bit. But um, put black primer on them first to make sure we get a nice even colour. And none of that red showing through the underneath because that will look sloppy. It's always best to paint anything you can do metallic black first. Now the cockpit, despite the fact in the end um, you don't get to see the cockpit, I didn't know that while building it, so because of uh, what our Swedish friend wanted. So I used Elfdor Blue on the buttons, Mephiston Red, and it's very bright and very simple at the moment because you can barely see it, but what the, the plan was to just wash this with a null oil wash and then an actual oil wash to uh, give those buttons and everything depth. We also used Warpstone Glow for the switches that were on or good to go. 
You could probably find some fluff somewhere for what all these buttons do, I have no idea. All the little screens were done green. Um, be nice to do a glowing effect on the inside so all the buttons are highlighting the pilot, but I've never get, never got a chance to do that. Then I'm going to put a null oil wash over all of those. If you wanted to take a bit more care, you could highlight all those buttons up first before putting a null, null oil wash on. Then it would tie them all together. Then when you put the oil wash on, it would put a hard black line around everything, really bringing it all out. Now again, like I said before, we need to break up that vast amount of red that we've got. I was just gonna, I could have just done these plain black, but uh, I wanted to put some stripes on them. That tends to break things up and also make them match the model rather than stand out too much. So the, the turrets were done in a Vallejo black primer. Then it's black grey by model colour, which is actually one of our favourite colours at the moment to highlight anything black with, um, for obvious reasons. Then we're using Tamiya tape there to um, tape off most of the round sections. Now this colour combination I'm putting on is just the same as it was before. But you can do this with a brush as well guys. All you got to do is make sure you don't push your bristles underneath the tape. If you've sealed it down properly, that won't be an issue. But um, Vallejo tape, can't recommend it. I mean Tamiya tape, can't recommend it enough. So obviously that's the German... Um, red brown and then we're going straight to the scarlet again going around the outside of the uh, hatch that opens and mainly the top part where the lights going to hit again all this can be done with a brush it just takes a lot more patience and will take you a lot more time then the fist on red as a uh, final highlight the only highlights left to do on the red bit there will be the edge highlights And of course we've magnetised these weapons as we always do. I didn't feel it necessary to show you how I painted uh, those guns, it was the same combination of colours. They're not completely finished but I just thought I'd show you what we've got so far. Now the auto cannons. They were done with Brass Scorpion by Games Workshop and Lead Belcher. Make sure you get all the way in there and cover that whole thing. You might need a couple of coats. And after that I did something a bit different. Instead of working up from Warlock Bronze to Brass Scorpion, I just did the uh, Brass Scorpion and then watered down Warlock Bronze a lot so it's a wash consistency and put that into the gaps um, instead of just a regular black wash. I think that kind of works well. Uh, once it's dry, you can just give it another dry brush of Brass Scorpion to sharpen those edges up even more. And that definitely gave a good sense of depth now I'm going to use null oil on all the lead belcher parts but I did recently buy a paint that uh, would save me doing this step it's um, black metallic by model air um, I'll show you that in one of the other videos now I wanted to break up the, con uh, not the control panel the front part of the ship instead of it just being the same colors so we used hammered copper because I do find that, you know, you paint those bits, you tend to stick to the same metallic palette. I just wanted to break it up a little bit more. So we used hammered copper by Game Color on the inner bits. We'll come back to those in a sec, I think. I did do an edge highlight on this of a uh, Wazdaka Red. But because I'd used the Scarlet, which is not usually a color I use for this, um, it it's on there but it doesn't show up very well at all so then we went to a uh, evil sun scarlet as a second highlight over that and as you can see that's starting to show up nicely on there looks a bit bright but that's because it's a really really wet and acrylic paint paints go brighter when they're wet so that'll tone down as well being a lot more subtle now we're not completely finished but that's what it looks like after you've done the edge our highlights and that takes ages it really does now we're using army paint a strong tone to go over the hammered copper uh, tone that down give it a bit more depth there's a lot more metallics on the uh, fire raptor than you'd think they'd be you get proper tired really really tired of just painting metallics 
Now I needed the guns, to, uh, the missiles to stick out a bit, but not too much, so I couldn't do them black, so we went for the um, German yellow primer and uh, covered those because obviously there's black and red and all sorts over them because we haven't done anything yet so we used the primer to give them a nice even coat of a base yellow now we're back to the Aquilas I gave them an Agrax Earthshade wash as you would expect and then went back to the Balthazar Gold to start picking out those edges I'm going to pick out all the edges and probably go over those very sharp edges with a tiny bit of silver. You could dry brush this but with all the extra work and everything else that's been done what, what tends to happen with a dry brush on something so small as the pigment flicks off the brush and you don't want traces of silver pigment all over, uh, all over, the, red, all over the red armor plating. Now bright brass was used by Game Air. Uh, to edge highlight all the engine parts. I didn't I didn't just do the uh, front of the engine there, I went around all those other little parts as well and all the parts at the back to uh, break it up. Because when I do the engine burn and some more weathering on that, that's going to show through ever so slightly and still look like an edge highlight. I didn't really need to do too much on the missiles here so I went and used Avalon Sunset, really watered down. You can see how bright that looks. And starting from halfway down to two thirds down to the tip, just bringing that colour forward. And when that dries, it should give a, a nice transition. Dawnstone was used to edge highlight all the black parts. And then we're using Iron Breaker to start edge highlighting all the bits that would lead belcher which also doesn't show up very well here on camera which is a bit of a shame but you can see what we're doing here and as always those weapons are magnetized so I can switch them around now I'm using Sick Green by Game Air to start highlighting all the um, lights and buttons um, but you can use milk green mixed with a bit of warp stone green to get the same colour. Just going to keep building those up. As always, starting from the back, pulling towards the front. Just want to be careful you don't leave any brush strokes on this because it's supposed to be very smooth. And that's basically all you really need to do for this one, guys. The window was tinted using a matte varnish first and then just a wash of Baltan green a few times. So I hope you liked it, hope you subscribe, uh, share with your friends, I'll catch you in the next one guys. Thanks for watching, bye.